Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. Inkscape is a great free program for creating uh, apparel design like t-shirts, ball caps, jackets. And so in this video I want to quickly show you how I would go about creating a t-shirt design in Inkscape. So there's a couple things we want to do. Um, pay no attention to the actual page because we're going to be scaling up our artwork, scaling up or down. And so I'm just going to come over here to uh, have the page be to the right there. And I'm just going to actually come over here to this tool. It's the Draw Bezier Curve tool. And I'm going to actually just left click a few different points. And what I want to do is create the outline of a t shirt. And so I'm going to roughly do this. And it's going to be, it's not going to work out so great. So I'm going to modify it afterwards. So don't worry if you don't get it exactly the way you want um, first thing. Because we can go to the selection tool and double click. And then we can actually come over and kind of just bring in these nodes a little bit and make it look a little bit more however we want you know if the sleeves are kind of wide like this it's kind of like cartoony but since this is going to be an actual we're trying to do a concept and, and get a, a visualization for what the artwork will look like on a t-shirt I'm gonna try and make it a little bit more kind of more realistic it's still it may not be perfect but we'll make it look a little more realistic that's not too bad there and then I'm gonna actually if we click on a line we can put a little bend here like in the neckline it's kind of a wide neckline, but it works. Uh, I'll put that back there. Okay, cool. So now this will be our, our shirt that we're going to be using as a concept. And so I'm going to actually make it some different colors. I will, uh, if we click down here, we can see it turns like a different color, but it still has that black outline, which does make it look kind of not very good, I don't think. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on this white uh, with, with an X on it in the bottom left hand corner. Now that goes away, so we have just uh, the shirt. And then I'm going to select it, and I can either go Control D to duplicate. I can right click and go copy, and then right click and go paste. I want to get a couple different copies here. Maybe I'll come up here. We can also, while it's selected, we can just grab it and hover over and hit the space bar, and it kind of like just stamps or puts a copy of one right where we put it. So now we have a bunch of different yellow t-shirts. We can click on one and change the colors. So we can do like a blue, we can do a green here, we can come and grab it, you know, whatever kind of colors we're thinking we might want to do for a shirt we can do. Let's do one maybe like this. Uh, and then for a white, if we do exactly white, it just blends in with our background, which is actually transparent. But if we do a couple shades up like this, we can kind of give it the look of a, a white shirt by making it a couple shades of gray. Maybe we'll do black and we'll come one or, one or two shades down from black to make it make it look like a black t-shirt. And then yellow, we can keep yellow like that. We can also right click and go um, fill and stroke. And we can also change the color this way if we want to fine tune and create like a cool orangey kind of shirt or something. But let's make that one. I kind of like yellow. Maybe we'll make it a little more dull. All right, so now we have a couple different shirts. All we need to do is put our logo on them. And so you probably already have your artwork. I'm not going to spend time creating artwork, but basically you just want to make sure that you have, uh, I'll, I'll talk about a couple different considerations for your artwork. So you'll want to make sure you don't have any um, uh, opacity on it like this. You'll want to create the, the look you're going for without achieving opacity. So to create kind of this look, we actually would change the color or something like this and keep it full opacity. Does that make sense? Also, we don't want to do any blurs. We don't want to have a blur on there because sometimes you'll, like what I'll do is I'll create, like a, I'll draw something in the background like this and then I'll give it a blur and, and bring down the opacity to create an effect. Well, that looks okay for, um, like this gives it like a glow behind. It might look okay for uh, like web design or like ad banners, but on printed media, we don't want that. We don't want that on business cards. We don't want it on t-shirts. Anything that's gonna be printed, we want nice hard lines as a rule of thumb. Also, we don't want gradients, so we don't want to introduce a gradient in here because that's going to be difficult to print as well. Okay, Control-Z to undo those changes, but we'll probably do some text down here, so whatever the name of your business is. Um, a lot of times, if it's something like this, I'll actually, um, ooh, Control-Z. If the shirt's getting in our way, we can lock it, but I'm just going to leave it there for now. We can put on a different layer. I'm going to, sometimes with text, I'll get two different ones. Oh, am I not in there? So I'll have one part of it be here, and I'll have one part of it be here. 
that just lets us easily change the color. We can select a certain letter and change the letters by different colors like this as well if we wanted to. But I like to separate it out to completely separate and that way we can have, you know, a different we'll do this. Which color should we do this text? That way we have, we have different options for each one. We could do a different font if we wanted to for for each different one or we can change the size and have, you know, co be larger. I hold control while I scale this, it doesn't get distorted. Do, do, do. Anyway, this is uh, kind of outside the scope, actually designing, outside the scope and potentially outside of my skill set to design a decent looking logo. So we're just gonna say that this is our logo right here. And um, or maybe we'll put it, yeah, we'll do it like that. But now the point is we can actually take this and go control D and we can zoom out and we can see what it'll look like. So maybe we're, we, we want this to be Oh, I'm snapping, I have nodes uh, snap enabled, so I'm gonna disable that so it doesn't bother me. But we can see what this will look like. I'm gonna turn on this so it scales proportionally every time. And we can see what it'll look like if it's in the corner of the t-shirt. We can see what it looks like against certain backgrounds. So we can control D. We can just stamp this on each one of these and see kind of how it'll look. Maybe we want the back, maybe we actually want this, uh, like this shirt here. To be the same as this color here, so we just uh, select this, select this, and then get the color dropper and make it the same. And then this can be like the front of the shirt, and this will be the back of the shirt. So the back we want this to be here, and we don't want to say Bizco, we want it to just be just a giant star or something. And then the front's like this. So we can create some different kinds of concepts. Again, like the artwork doesn't, you'll you'll have your artwork figured out hopefully and drawn. And then this just helps you see where it is. So, the, but what I really want to talk about is exporting um, for your printer. So, when you have this professionally printed, either if you're having it uh, a, a web company do it or like your local printer, you're, they're going to want to see a couple of things. One, they might want to see the original source file. So, in that case, just go to File, Save, and then just save it as an SVG. So, we can put it under. Um, we'll put this under Pictures, maybe, and we'll call this um, Shirts. Dot SVG, and then that saves our actual vector file. We could send them, but a lot of printers don't want that. What they really just want is a high resolution image of just your logo, exactly how it needs to be printed on the shirt. And they also need reference for where it's going to be on the shirt. So what we would do is send them something like this. We'd send them just a front and a back um, as a concept. So we go to File, and then we go to Export PNG Image. We choose a location where it's going to be saved, so under pictures, and then we call this um, uh, shirt concept or whatever dot png, and hit save, and then hit export, and that exports that to our that location on the computer. So we can go find those over in picture pictures, and we can see what that looks like. So sure enough, we have a nice concept here of what the shirts will look like against a transparent background. So we can send this to them. We could even put a color on the background if we wanted to, to make it appear uh, nicer for them. And then we can also, or we need to also send just the high resolution uh, images. So if it's a front and back are different, we would do that differently, but we just select the actual artwork. I'm gonna duplicate it and bring it out here just to white empty space. And this is the most important part. Doesn't matter if we scale it up or down here or what we do because we're gonna change the settings over here in the export PNG anyway, since this is all vector work. We're gonna select the whole thing, come over here to our export settings, which we got by going file, export PNG image. We'll choose the location first of all. So we'll send it to pictures and we'll call this um, artwork for shirt dot PNG and hit save and now this is where it's important that we change the actual pixels. For this, we want to make it be like 600 DPI, or maybe your printer will have different settings that they want ask for, but as a rule of thumb, it's good to do something like three or 600 DPI, that's dots per inch for the resolution. And then we also want the width here, maybe have this be something like 2000 by 2000. You can't really go wrong making it too large. I mean, I guess you could make it incredibly like way too large, but you should err on the side of making your artwork too large as far than rather than having it too small. If it's too small, I'll show you. If we do like 20 by if we do 20 by 25 and go to export and then we go to find that where did I put it? Artwork for a shirt. Then when we open it up, we're going to see it's actually 
this is a, a very good a, a, you know this is just so small that it's all blurry see we can't even read the the, the words or anything on there so that was a problem and um, so we what we need to do is over here make it uh, we select it again select the whole thing and then we'll make it 600 by 600 and I'll make this 2000 2000 by 2500 roughly that's pretty good okay perfect and we will uh, again choose location we'll overwrite that artwork one save export and now and this could take a, a little bit longer to you know depending on your computer and the size and the complexity of your work you'll know that if it takes a long time to export or you know a couple seconds that you've got the right one so we go to uh, the artwork now and take a look and we should be able to see this uh, very nice so this is what they'll receive and this just has a transparent background and so all that will be printed on the shirt is this so they can put on any color they want and that's kind of the reason that we went and went ahead and did this and got all these different uh, shirts we can see we can see roughly what it'll look like against white or against blue and then we can also draw like a ball cap or draw a pair of jeans or a jacket and kind of you know do this whole design conceptualization for ourselves maybe you want to export just this and share it to like a Kickstarter page to show what this shirt will look like you know so there's lots of different um, options for this for designing it whether you're going to be displaying it like I said on, on a website to show what your shirt looks like for people that order it or if you want to actually design and then send to the printer but when you're sending it to a professional printer just make sure you have your artwork really high DPI uh, really large image and then also send them the actual source file that SVG image in case they need to make minor tweaks or changes and maybe it's a good idea too to export just the artwork as a source file without all the the shirts but they should be able to, to get in there and make changes too well hopefully that's been informative for you um, I've done this process quite a bit actually um, using Inkscape to create um, printed uh, printed artwork for t-shirts and uh, ball caps and different types of apparel and it works really really well and um, so when you do it right you know the the printer doesn't sometimes they say like it has to be an Adobe Illustrator file but it doesn't and if they want your business um, they'll accept just a you know a raw SVG file or a high resolution PNG image thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments uh, leave them below uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video informative. Check out my other videos where I teach how to use Inkscape and other free creative software. And I hope to see you in the next video.